Mr. Lutz, you have six minutes. Thank you, Ray Lutz with Citizens Oversight. Uh, as a trained engineer, I'd like to ask that the California Coastal Commission deny the permit to allow the state time to review other alternatives and to allow more thorough review of the plan. Uh, we did submit two documents to you last week, which you should have already received. I'd like to briefly cover those today. Um, the first one entitled, Let's Find a Solution for Nuclear Waste in California, covers why this is a bad site and that the California Energy Commission policy embraced by the Blue Ribbon Commission priority is removal of spent fuel from shutdown sites. The Blue Ribbon Commission estimated permanent disposable disposal was available in 2048, not 2024 as you may hear. The nuclear waste was not part of the public bargain to put this plant in. So the public does not expect for a nuclear waste dump to exist at this site. 3.6 million pounds of waste is proposed to be buried here. The industry says the technology is proven, but many elements have never been proven, such as transportation. There is no permanent disposal, so there's many loose ends. This has never, many issues are still open. Following that, we decided to look into other uh, locations, and if you can scroll down in the PDF uh, a little bit, if you'll look in the document that you have at your disposal, what we did was look for a site in California where this, this could be built a better place. We found a place in the desert on the uh, North American plate, not around um, any earthquakes. This is in, in the desert region where there isn't much around. Um, it is not in any um, sites that, that are designated as either um, uh, seismic hazards. The, the biggest hazard there is heat. It's not in a tribal area or designated wilderness. It's right on the rail line. So it can be put on a rail car at San Onofre and moved to a site like this and, and placed there versus leaving it 100 feet from the water and only inches above the water line. If you actually look at this proposal with a clear head and say, should we put it on the coast 100 feet from the water only inches above the water line for a million years, is it a good idea? Because really, once they get it in here, it probably never will get it come out. We need to stop this permit now so that we can move forward. Now, this site is called Fischl that we found. Can you move down a little bit in the document? It's in a, just a blank valley with no one around for 50 miles or more. Instead, the San Onofre site has 8.4 million people. So if a terrorist wanted to attack the San Onofre site, they would detonate a conventional weapon and you would have a dirty bomb. We would have to evacuate all of Southern California. In this area, why would you want to attack that? No one lives around it. So it eliminates the terrorist threat. Go down a little bit more in the document. Okay, this shows you the earthquake uh, lines, the fault lines, and this is in a non-earthquake area. We're putting it instead in an area where there's uh, lots of earthquake faults and lots of risk there's also tsunami risk. There's also hurricane risk that we've seen now, lots of hurricanes coming up. Surge water, storm water, if you only have 13 inches. And in their own report, they said that the, the coast would erode 29 feet in the 35 years that they proposed. That's a third of the way up to where it is. If you leave it there for 100 feet, you're going to have this block of concrete falling off into the ocean with radioactive casks in it. Can you scroll down a little bit more? This shows you the... Native American areas, it's not in those areas, continue to go down a little bit more. And this, is, this shows you the rail line, roughly speaking, so you can review this in, in more detail. One of the issues that we found was that these canisters are too heavy to put on a conventional railroad car. It takes a, a, a really big railroad car and you have to have really good tracks, so all the tracks would have to be improved. The, these canisters have not been proven to be transportable. We need to take another look at this, make sure that any canisters that are used can at least be moved out of here. Because if you, if you designate these huge canisters, which weigh about 450,000 pounds or so, and most railroad tracks are 386,000 pounds, is that in your staff report, a review of the weight of the canisters and whether they can be moved? No. 
We just heard an excellent report of a, a bike trails and other things along the coast where someone spent their whole career working on it. Where's the person's career working on this? We're going to put radioactive waste on the coast with only a, a few months of review, and it's going to be there for perhaps a million years? Please. The community engagement panel that is supposed to disseminate information that's run by Edison did not even notify us of this meeting. They're supposed to be the ones promulgating information. Therefore, a lot of the people that are concerned about this were never informed. Why did that happen? Because Edison wants to sneak this through without adequate review. That's why I'm hoping that I can implore on you today to at least delay this. There's no need to rush into this. You've got 35 years of decommissioning ahead of us. Is there a need to rush this stuff out and immediately throw it in these unproven canisters that are too big to transport? On rail lines, you don't even know where they're going and no one has a plan? No. You should stop this right now and say, we're going to have more review. Let's talk to the California Energy Commission. It's their job to do this. Make sure that they chime in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Maria uh, Severson. We, no. You're going to remember that uh, we do ask that folks not uh, show their appreciation or their rejection of ideas by clapping or calling out. We have a number of speaker cards I want to give everyone the opportunity, so if folks uh, who know they're going to be speaking next could get ready, I'd appreciate it. Welcome. Good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is Maria Severson, and I am here as a public advocate as a citizen of Southern California, and as a mother of three children. You are at a critical point in time. You have been asked to approve entombing 3.6 million pounds of toxic radioactive nuclear waste. Now, they, you're here because Edison has put you in this position claiming that there are no alternatives. So what do they do? They pick the worst alternative putting it on our beaches in a populated area of San Diego County. Now, Edison has operated for 40 years at this plant, taking in billions of dollars in rates and generating nuclear waste for 40 years. But it did nothing during that time to determine what to do with that waste. They say, this is not our problem. It's the government's problem. We're waiting for somewhere to put it. But this is because Edison made no plans. They were here in 2000 asking you for an interim storage facility, and that's still interim. It's never going to move if you do this today. The commission, Edison has put this commission on the spot after greedy and irresponsible behavior. When it didn't get a license and it got the big steam generators without approval, it then, when it got in trouble and they failed after two of the 40 years, went to Warsaw, Poland, and worked out a deal. Because of their dishonesty, you cannot reasonably rely on their representations. They ran the business with no exit strategy. We know that they got from the California Public Utility Commission what they wanted through improper influence, closed door meetings, ex parte meetings, and contributions. They have scorched the integrity of the PUC. Don't let that happen to this commission. You have alternatives at this point in time. Approve it and a suit will be filed because there's no record. But the better course is, and I'll finish up now, thank you, do the hard work now. Thank Postpone you. this until they can come up with alternatives, have a meeting in San Diego County where it belongs. Thank you for your comments. the San Diego County and wait for the energy department. Thank you. Hello, I'd like to share my time with Jasper Morgel, my son. So the two of us together. I have a handout uh, that looks like this, if you'd like to find it. Uh, my name is Richard Morgel, and uh, I live in Ramona, California. I'd like to share with you a little history about the North Industrial Area, the site where the SCE is proposing to locate its ISFACI, being discussed today. Years ago, the site was, this site was the location of the Songs-1 reactor. The attached photo, taken in 2005, right here that you have, uh, shows the containment sphere of songs in between the old new homes, uh, Isfasi in the ocean. In the backside of the attached photo, if you flip over and look at the attached photo that I sent you, there's a page that looks like this. And if you look towards the 
left-hand side of the picture, you can see a sphere. That sphere is the location of Songs 1, where it was before they decommissioned it. Um, a, former, uh, a former NRC inspector took me off to the fact that SCE's ISFACI is proposed to be built right on the right next to the monolithic subterranean concrete superstructure used to support Songs 1's containment sphere. Uh, is that a big deal? Well, maybe. Some of that superstructure is still there, uh, it residing eight feet below the current grade and was the source of um, radioactive tritium detected during the decommissioning of Songs 1. During the Songs 1 decommissioning, several sample wells were drilled near Songs 1, and each high tide brought increasing tritium concentrations. Take a look at how close the 12.5 foot deep ISFACI excavations are going to be next to the Songs 1 decont uh, decontaminated or uh, containment sphere. Uh, this tritium rich soil is going to be repurposed uh, and backfilled uh, for the ISFACI in the proposed attachment for the CDP. The soil was expo will expose the surrounding environment workers and beachgoers um, to um, potential tritium. I don't know how, uh, I would like to know what safeguards uh, SCE should include in their ISFACI plans to ensure that the contaminated soils known to be deep within underneath Songs 1 site uh, will not impede beachgoers' access to the ocean some 100 feet away from this ISFACI development. How can you say that you're going to uh, support Coastal Act Chapter 3, Article 2, Section 3021, where the proposed development will not interfere with the people and their access to the ocean at that site? It doesn't seem feasible. Please deny today's act. Thank I'd like you. my son to be able to talk. I believe I only got three minutes total. Yeah, if your son would like to speak, we'll give him one minute. Welcome, Jasper. Hi. I'm Jasper Morgel, and I'm from Ramona. And I'm here to talk about the dry cask storage at San Onofre. Okay, let's get to the problem. Since the canisters are too heavy, that means that they're trapped at songs. And my generation is, need, is going to need to move the canisters because salt corrosion might make it so that one of them breaches. Once one breaches, there will be no beach access, and then we'll have to move them. So I think you should deny any permit that includes putting casks that are too heavy in the ground. Thank you. Thank you. Gary Hedrick, Mary Beth Brannigan. And then Rita Kahn. Good afternoon. My name's Gary Hedrick. I'm founder of San Clemente Green, which is a group of concerned citizens, mostly about sustainability. But um, in 2010, we were contacted by whistleblowers or concerned workers, actually, at the power plant, saying that the, the steam generator project was not being uh, tested properly and they were concerned but they were being retaliated against by management so they came to us which is shocking. Uh, since then we've been following the story and trying to make sure the right things are done by a industry that like was said before has the worst safety record of all nuclear power plants in the United States. It was also mentioned that um, some of their dealings with the CPUC are questionable in terms of the legality of the way they've been coming up with the settlement. Uh, and even the NRC is questionable because they, they turned down the opportunity to investigate what actually happened with the steam generator project. So that kind of a way for them to bypass any responsibility they may have had too. So. My concern, and um, you know, I represent about 4,800 local citizens that share these concerns about um, who's going to protect us from these kind of ideas. And I know there's certain jurisdiction you have that don't apply to radiation or safety, but um, 
if you allow the plan to proceed as suggested, it's almost certain that we will end up with the nuclear power, um, nuclear waste site permanently, as far as we're concerned, indefinitely. So what we're asking is, if you're, if you're applying conditional um, approval in this case, then the things that we think should be um, part of this, I'm sorry, was they should be inspected, maintained, continuous monitoring, make sure they're transportable, and make sure they don't crack. Please Thank include those. Thank you. Mary Beth and Rita, and then Jeff Stamets. Welcome. Hi, Steve. Um, Mary Beth Brangan, Ecological Options Network, E.ON. Plus, I will be speaking for the National Nuclear Free Campaign of the Sierra Club, who uh, also recommends that the California Coastal Commission deny the application for this experimental, unproven, spent fuel dry storage system. Um, in addition to all the comments that have already been made, uh, which we agree with, I wanted to bring out that a, a huge consideration is that these Holtec um, proposed systems have high capacity. They want to put 37 fuel assemblies in these canisters with high burn-up fuel. That means they may need to be in dry storage to, uh, 45 years, even if there were a place to move it now, it would be 45 years before they'd be cool enough to move. So that means you've got to have the right storage system for them now. Um, also, the uh, current Holtec license doesn't meet the current NRC UMAX license, so the current system, because they're using a different thickness of canisters that's in the current uh, license. And uh, they also haven't, uh, the seismic evaluation that the NRC UMAC license was predicated on uh, was for fully underground uh, systems, not partially underground system. Um, so we, we definitely uh, want you to think carefully. This possibly is the most long-lasting decision that the Coastal Commission, Commission will ever have to make, and the one that will have the greatest impact on the population, health, and also the environmental and economic health of this area. Thank you. Thank you. Rita, then Jeff, then uh, Jorgen Johnson, or Torgen. Um, just wanted to let you know that Dr. Khan cedes his time to me. Okay. Has he filled out a speaker card? Yes, he has. Okay, thank you. You have four minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Rita Khan. I am chairwoman of Let Laguna Vote. And your staff is really smart. And um, they recognize in this application that there are lots of uncertainties and that they have their doubts. And that's probably why at the end of every category they have inserted one or two one of two clauses. Either they're eliminating liability for the Coastal Commission or they say something like this. Staff proposes to mitigate this doubt with special conditions that must be met in 20 years. And 20 years is a long time and a lot of really bad things could happen in that time. So why 20 years when there is current technology available today that would mitigate all of those concerns and that is licensed in the US? Take, for example, the dry cast storage systems that were used at Fukushima. Surprisingly, they, they, were, they survived intact the, um, the earthquake of a 9.0 and the tsunami that was 47 uh, feet tall. They're vastly different than the kind that Edison is proposing today. And I brought you a visual. The, the thickness of the walls of the canisters that survived Fukushima are this thick. The thickness of the walls that Holtec plans to use are this thick. 
It is, yeah, right, you can hardly see it. It's a big difference, and it makes a big difference as well. In addition, this system is installed above ground in a hardened structure, so there would be no need to harm our precious bluffs. They also are both a storage canister and a transfer canister, which means that there will be no questions. It will be ready when the Department of Energy comes to get it, and we can restore that site again and enjoy it. There, there is no history of this lasting. There's no history of the infrastructure that they want to put it in lasting because it's never been used before any place in the world in these marine uh, conditions. So let's pay attention to not only what Edison tells us, but also what Edison doesn't tell us. Like I believe that according, they did not tell you this about their their vendor that according to the Department of Justice and the Office of the Inspector General, Edison's selected vendor, Holtec, was the first vendor to be debarred as a USA contractor after a TVA power plant uh, manager pleaded guilty to felony, felony charges of accepting a bribe. This doesn't speak well for their integrity. And when the chief dry cast storage inspector for the Chicago NRC, Ross Landsman, was asked to sign off on Holtec's quality assurance, he refused, stating this is the same kind of thinking that led to the NASA space shuttle disaster. As far as I'm concerned, Holtec has no quality assurance. The findings of the report that the government did in Fukushima said that that was a man-made disaster. Yes, due to the collusion between the governing bodies and between the utilities companies. It could have been prevented. This is your chance. There's other technologies available. God forbid an emergency could be prevented by asking Edison to supply you with all of the options, not just the one. Please deny this permit. Two minutes? Two minutes. Never enough. My name is Torgan Johnson. I'm an urban planner, Harvard trained, two graduate degrees from Harvard. I'm in North County, San Diego. On June uh, 2013, I helped organize a public conference titled Fukushima Ongoing Lessons for California. It was held down at the county administrative offices in San Diego. My wife and I invited the former prime minister of Japan, Naoto Kan, who was the prime minister in Japan at the time of the nuclear disaster in Fukushima. Prime Minister Kan, on the many conversations that we had on that trip and five other conferences that I joined him with here and in Japan emphasized that it was the fuel storage that he and his nuclear experts feared most during that disaster in 2011. Now Edison uses the term safety all the time when they talk about fuel, whether it's in pools or whether it's in dry casts. Safety is a relative term when Edison uses it and be cautious. I urge you to err on the side of caution. There's no penalty if you deny the permit because you are erring on the side of caution. Because there's nothing that deprives the public of its use and enjoyment of a public beach more than an industrial accident at a nuclear fuel storage facility, like the one that you're reviewing right now. You have no jurisdiction over radiological disasters, but you do have jurisdiction over protecting the use of the beaches. And I would urge you to deny the permit because this proposed system is experimental, it's unproven. Um, others have come before you with well-researched uh, uh, facts about the deficiency of this system and the questions of the system. So if anything, you should have uh, a, a shadow of a doubt about the integrity of this system. Edison's proven in the past that it has a deep contempt for a public that has concern over its safety and protection of its property. Thank two you. minutes is too short. Too important of an issue for two minutes. Thank you. Welcome. Uh,
Thank you. I'm Tara Neider, and I'm a senior VP at Areva. And Areva is a company that has the has has designed and supplied the systems that are existing at uh, San Onofre today. I'm a registered professional engineer. And I want to take issue with one thing that was said today, and that is that there's no potential alternatives in the in the near future. I disagree with that. We're currently working on a license. We have a meeting tomorrow, another meeting with the NRC on the um, the the interim storage facility at uh, in Andrews, Texas, uh, with waste control specialists. That that facility will be designed and licensed for taking the fuel at this site. Um, I also want to say that I've been out of the I've been in the used fuel industry for almost 30 years, but I took the last four and a half years and was working in the, uh, the DOE market. And the DOE is taking is spending about six billion dollars right now on industry on on uh, radioactive cleanup at all of the DOE sites. Um, they part of that money that they're spending is emptying single shell cast. Si si tanks that are underground and moving them into double-shelled tanks because of water intrusion and waste getting into the environment. We now know that the double-shelled tanks are also leaking. So there is a way when you put things underground, out of sight, that, that things happen. Nature is, is a lot stronger than us and, I, and to have things underground right at the water level does not seem to make sense to me. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Commissioners. I'm a resident in Escondido, and um, most of my adult life I've been actively involved in trying to keep up with what's going on at San Onofre. Um, as you know, uh, you, I'm sure you've all been overwhelmed with all the technical reports and complexity uh, and reports by Edison's expert and the consultants they retained versus uh, report experts retained by uh, independent uh, consultants who are outside of the nuclear industry. Um, it makes it difficult for you, and I agree with previous speaker uh, that Edison has, unfortunately, I think, placed this commission in a very uh, precarious position. Um, I don't think it's necessary. From my observation of uh, being a stakeholder since uh, the community engagement panel was formed in the middle of 2014. Um, Edison has pretty much pre-selected, predefined their choice uh, with uh, th the type of cast that they've chosen to use the Holtec Umax stainless steel 5 8 inch thick containers. Um, it's pretty much, you know, their proposal. They've uh, invested a lot of money and a lot of time to have their experts uh, do analysis to the extent that it's possible. I wish to reinforce to the commission just to understand that, uh, unfortunately, NRC uh, is undertaking or is in the infancy process of undertaking rulemaking to determine or to develop rules that will ultimately apply to uh, decommissioning sites. Right now, the, there are no uh, rules in place. So we're going by guidance and policy and uh, nebulous things that sometimes change. Uh, it's very difficult. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, in 2014, November, uh, I learned of the plan to bury 1,632 tons of nuclear waste, and I got involved. Um, I've, met, I've spoken at bipartisan policy meetings, CEP meetings, and one of the most interesting meetings was in Washington, D.C., with the representatives from Nevada when they were told that everything was okay about Yucca Mountain. Well, the state of Nevada hired their own biologists and determined that their water was about to be contaminated, and they sued, and they protected their. I expect us, that the Coastal Commission to do the same thing, to err on the side of safety. I urge you not to let the gravity of a decision to use thin canisters to store dangerous nuclear waste unnecessarily fall on the commissioners. When there are leaks on the bluff, or the bluff fails for any reason, it will litter our precious ocean and beaches, and all of these containers could end up on the beach or in the ocean. And I'm not speaking of just radiological. That would be a hazard to even navigating those waters. There are too many unknowns in the applicant's proposal. 
when a decision requires as many conditions as the staff recommended, it is further proof that you need a better proposal. Approving the proposal today is premature and not best business practices. At a minimum, the rods need to be placed in casts that can be inspected and transported, or the Coastal Commission will be in the unique position of being the removal, the roadblock to removal when the DOE does come after them. And the DOE is considering removing the waste to the interim locations right now. I have a letter from the DOE, well, I will include for the record, uh, that states that. Congressman Darrell Issa that serves the district just introduced a bill co-sponsored by a Texas con congressman that represents the district that wants the fuel. Senator Feinstein and Boxer sponsored a bill calling for the removal. This is a bipartisan movement, finally. Page nine of the staff report states offsites are unavailable in the near term. I disagree. Texas has, has the desire to get the waste, the political will, and the approval of the people. They now have a low-level site, and it could be ready in five years, which is much shorter than what we're anticipating here. The same paragraph, there's no other site under SCE's control. SCE is not responsible for removing this waste, the Department of Energy is. And if SCE is allowed to place it in these thin canisters, they will obstruct the ability of the DOE to transport it out of there. We can't, reply, we can't rely on vendor reports. Has an environmental impact report been performed? I'm calling for an EIR report to be performed prior to your approval of this agenda item. We need facts, not promises from a vendor. Thank you for your time, and please vote no today. Thank you, commissioners. I have a little different report for you. And I was very touched, and I could see you were by the young man who testified. I'm very concerned, and I should be, and so should you be. There's a famous picture, what me worry? You bet. <laughs> we all should be worried, extremely worried. I don't want to see you come under fire or have liability, but I don't want to see the public disappointed in your actions. So we here are very concerned with the reports and expert testimony we've read and heard. And we urge you, this entire commission, to demand that Edison use only proven systems for storing nuclear waste that can be inspected. It needs to be maintained and have continuous monitoring. It has to be transportable and doesn't crack. Shockingly, Edison's proposal does none of these things. In order to protect our coastal assets well into the future, all of these criteria should be met before getting your approval. And we all know that Songs is located at shoreline in both earthquake and tsunami zones. It's vulnerable to any offshore or flyover targeting. The public is really not aware. They don't taste it, hear it, see it, or feel it. They are not warned nor aware of their proximity to hazardous waste, contaminated sand, or ocean waters where our children swim. Any more than in 1956, when my mother was filming in Utah, and everyone was exposed, and she had cancer. So Thank it's you. very personal to me. Thank I you care. for your comments. Thank you very much. Please do the right thing. Hi, my name's Ace Hoffman. Uh, I've been following this issue for decades. About four years ago, I went to an NRC hearing, and I gave out co about 180 copies of this book to the staff and to any activists and anyone else who wanted one. Uh, the staff of Southern California Edison. And a few months after that, one of them came to me and he said that he was very worried. He had 25 years experience at San Onofre. Before that, he worked at Los Alamos. And before that, he was a sniper in Vietnam. And he said that they're not welding the casks properly, that the uh, automated welding system that puts the, the tops on and, or the bottoms or the seams were not always being calibrated right 
And when they weren't right, they weren't adjusting them, they weren't redoing them because of worker intimidation, which uh, Donna Gilmore mentioned. Now, when I was up at uh, Diablo Canyon a couple of weeks ago, the CPUC had a joint meeting with a, a state senator and a few other people, and they were adamant that they're no longer going to say that they don't, uh, that they're not going to be involved with safety. They've been saying that the same as you are saying it now, and they decided they're not going to do that anymore. Now, I admit that at some point they did say, well, we have to defer to the NRC, but you can at least consider it, and I don't think you're even beginning to. You've got to consider safety. That's what your job is, is to consider whether or not these flimsy dry casks, and also I, I submitted a letter to Joseph Street this morning, which goes over dozens of problems with these dry casks. So you've, you've got to give, you've got to do your job, which is to protect our coast. And nobody else can protect our coast like you can, because you can simply say no, and I hope that you will. And I'm going to submit copies of this book so you can see what it was that the, uh, and they, nobody ever came to me and said that they found significant errors in this book. In fact, I haven't had anyone tell me there are errors in it. Thank you very much. I share all the concerns that you've been hearing this afternoon. And I want to just say that, that relying on promises of, of future technology is exactly what got us in the position we're in today. We were promised that the, nu that the spent nuclear fuel from our power plants would be taken to a, a permanent repository. And that was decades ago, and we still don't have one. I hope that we're not going to make the same mistake again by, by uh, allowing 20 years to develop a way to get these canisters out of the ground. The staff report mentions, but doesn't evaluate, some existing alternatives to the proposed canisters that may be more durable, inspectable, and ultimately transportable. I hope that you will reject this proposal and encourage Edison to solve all the technical problems before the spent fuel was moved. Johanna Felder. What is not included in this report are the effects of the expected El Nino and its effects on the water table. If the bluff fails, there would be 157 ton canisters falling into the ocean. And this must be prevented. It is ludicrous that you cannot consider the possibility of a leak. So let's not consider what would happen to the 8,841,000 people in the 50-mile San Onofre evacuations, uh, evac evacuation zone, if there is a leak. But you can consider what effect bluff failure or contamination into the ocean will have on the marine life. Please deny this permit. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Roberta Kantsteiner, and I'm speaking on behalf of Laguna Canyon Conservancy. I'd like to ask a few questions. One is, has a stability analysis been done? What did it reveal? Are the bluffs, the bluffs are unconsolidated sand. Will the excavation go into the bedrock and how deep? <laughs> Two is, has an environmental impact report been made? Is it based on geology and engineering analysis? Three, will it contaminate the migrating groundwater located at the terrace bedrock contact? Four, cement is permeable. Will the vault be lined with lead or a similar dense element? How thick will that lining be? Five, what monitoring system will be used to measure radiation leaks? Six, if the vault is located near sea level, what will prevent it from contaminating the ocean? Um, I agree with most that's been said, and I'd like to add that this legacy is something that we don't want to regret. So I ask that you please vote no and get something more reliable. And thank you for your time and service. Thank you. Welcome. Good afternoon. Daryl Gale, Los Angeles. Everyone who lives near or visits the beach understands the concept of corrosion. Just look at common items like bicycles and patio furniture. It is easy to see the effects of sand, salt, water, and wind. Now, we all know that Edison is nothing like TEPCO, but they need some help, some encouragement. And I know that the Coastal Commission is much more enlightened than the Japanese government. TEPCO didn't plan for future cons 
contingencies, but we can. We've been very lucky here. We haven't had any recent earthquakes or tsunamis. We haven't had the problem that the East Coast has. Look at what's going on with, with uh, Southern uh, South Carolina, and look at what happened with Hurricane Sandy. But we've had another major problem, and it's collective denial. A 20-inch thick cask, cask manufactured by Camp is probably the best we can do right now till we have the political will and backing from the state of California, the NRC, and the DOE to develop a more workable solution in transportation and storage, whether it be regional or national. Coastal Commission, please take the lead and help us in Southern California find a better solution. Use your influence. Protect all of us here. We can't afford to take this potentially horrible risk of contaminating and decimating our beautiful tourist-friendly beach communities and the people, animals, and plants who live here. Let us all commit to working on a safer solution no matter what it costs. Prevention is a lot easier and cheaper than crisis mitigation. Please deny. Thank you. Good afternoon, Coastal Commission. I spoke at the CEP community engagement panel meeting and was not informed of this meeting today by my trusted energy provider, Southern California Edison. How is that for transparency? At the CEP meeting, I had provided my email address directly to Holtec President Dr. Singh, who failed to provide the requested technical documents I had directly requested him to provide. I speak today not only for myself, but for my daughter, who is in college, and in behalf of my family members who cannot be here present today due to work obligations, I also speak in behalf of my unborn grandchildren who have no voice today, since your decision will directly impact the millions of people who live near and along our environmentally sensitive California shoreline, which you have all pledged to protect for future generations. I am here to oppose the approval of application of agenda item 14A. The California coast is not a suitable site for the proposed temporary or permanent storage of nuclear waste. The approval of agenda item 14A appears to set a precedence that approvals for storage of high level radioactive waste can be granted based upon speculative, unforeseeable, and unknown assumptions that the Federal Department of Energy will take custody of all the songs spent fuel by 2049. However, we all know the facts at present that no long-term storage facilities exist in the United States for the storage of spent nuclear fuel. This is a nationwide issue of grave consequence to the American citizens. It is imperative that the Coastal Commission not approve the permitting of the poorly proposed designed thin Holtec manufactured storage casts to be used for nuclear fuel storage, since the approval of thin casts would be premised upon a mere assumption that the nuclear waste can and will be re relocated. I urge a no vote. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Les McClosey. I'm a resident of Laguna Beach and a registered professional engineer in the state of California. Um, I'm familiar with this program by reading, of course, the literature. Uh, there are four requirements that are necessary to make this a successful, safe, dry storage. They are, the, the canisters have to be inspectable, they have to be maintainable, they have to be repairable, and they have to be, most importantly, transportable. Um, I'm going to offer you three special conditions that we can add to the staff report to, to perhaps uh, find a way forward because Holtec does not meet any of those conditions. The, the criteria for success in this matter is that those four conditions be met among others. Those are the big ones. There are alternatives out there. Uh, so the, here are the four, here are, here are the three special conditions I'd like you to consider. The uh, first one is to substitute for the Holtec containers, for the Holtec dry storage containers, uh, the European version, or there's also one being used right now at Surrey Power Station in Virginia. That has, that has been uh, approved and used. Uh, another, the, the second special condition would be to, to apply uh, that, that, that 
to take that um, let's see a couple things they're going to say uh, to take the new containers that they're using there and fast track them for for approval for certification and approval and the third thing would be to move this it's a dry storage site off of the uh, north area, north industry area, because that's in a floodplain. And in the future, uh, it'd be much better to locate that where units two and three are. Thank you very much. Thank you. Barbara Miller, I'm, I live in Laguna Beach. Um, your decision today is a huge responsibility. If the canisters fail, the risk of harm to people and property within San Diego and Orange County is significant. This is a gamble we cannot afford to take. Will the canisters fail if there's an earthquake? Will the bluff maintain its integrity? Will the canisters fail if there is a tsunami? Will the location of the canisters erode? Will the canisters maintain their integrity? For how long? Do you know? Mr. Palmasano from Edison's, in his presentation, he talked about this being a safe, secure, and economical suggestion and plan. Are there thicker canisters which might be safer but perhaps less economical? Do we know? The 10-year warranty is meaningless. What is the plan for monitoring? What will be done if the canisters fail? The bluff is too fragile to allow this plan to move forward. We need to keep beaches accessible without the dangers inherent in this unproven and risky scheme. I urge you to deny this application and to seek a safer option. Thank you. Good day, commissioners. I'm Bruce Campbell from LA. I'm not a Sierra Club spokesperson on this issue, but I am on a couple chapter committees and have worked on nuclear power issues since 1979. I was happy to see that the National Nuclear Free Campaign of the Sierra Club has submitted a letter just last night in, opposed, in opposition to SCE's Radway scheme. A fellow who gets 95% of his info from SCE claims to be endorsing the SCE application on behalf of a Sierra Club task force, yet no committee in the Angeles chapter approved any wording regarding San Onofre rad waste. Yet in email exchanges, Glenn Pascal was unhappy that someone accused him of endorsing the Holtec UMAX radway system, which he said he never did. Apparently he liked the general concept of storage, but has no position on the chosen canisters. By the way, dry cask storage must be in a cask, not a thin canister. Also, dry cask storage should have a good chance to stay dry. But it will not stay dry due to the poor design of the Holtec UMAX system with its vents and drain. Plus, Holtec canisters cannot be repackaged into a cask and thus cannot be transported. This site will not be decommissioned by 2051 because of the high burn-up fuel has to cool down longer in order to be transported. Holtec canisters cannot be transported, and cracked canisters cannot be transported. If the plan won't work, then reject the SCE, SCE application. Please use common sense as to whether it sounds like a viable proposal. Rejecting an unviable proposal is not judging this subject on the radiation <coughs> issue. Now consider the thickness of casts again. The German cast 20 inches thick contained 24 spent fuel assemblies. So. Uh, and then the five-eighths of an inch thick, what would they contain? One, maybe one assembly? No, they want 37 assemblies. This is a cheap, cheapskate utility trying to pull the wool all of, over our eyes to get a permanent rad waste dump while acting like they're going to move the waste out soon. Here's a letter from the Topanga Peace Alliance I want to submit to the record. In, and they also oppose the application.